question. Um, so I've got about 20 minutes, so I'm going to kind of go relatively quickly through the beginning part where I give background on Polkadot, and I'm going to spend the bulk of this on crowd loans and parachain auctions. So on this slide here, you can see Polkadot and Kusama. These are the kind of multi-chain networks that are, are being built today and are, are very soon going to see blockchains being built or launched on top of them. So you see, you see here along Polkadot, all these little kind of gray um, squares here are what we call parachains. These are essentially custom built blockchains that are plugging into Polkadot's existing network of security and validators. And then Kusama on the right is essentially Polkadot's cousin network. This is more of an experimental ground um, built with the exact same code base as Polkadot. And this is where projects will launch um, first before moving to Polkadot. And we also might see some teams launching exclusively on Kusama. Um, as you can see in the middle here, this is just meant to indicate that there will be a bridge between these two networks in addition to all the other bridges going out to networks like Ethereum and, and uh, Bitcoin. Um, Polkadot was founded by Gavin Wood. He invented the Ethereum virtual machine and he invented the Solidity programming language. When he realized that um, Ethereum really wasn't going to scale, he, he left Ethereum and started building Polkadot um, back around 2016 or so. Um, the Polkadot was built for about three years, um, three, three and a half years, and then um, began to launch last year. Um, and when you really boil it down to the basics, these are kind of the six problems or challenges in existing networks that Polkadot is um, being built to solve. Um, connecting blockchains together, this is the, the buzzword of interoperability that we've all heard the last few years and is really starting to actually become a reality soon. Um, being able to handle transactions at scale, so scalability. Plug and play security is a, is a big one. When, when people ask about the differences between um, Polkadot and some of the competing or, or relatively similar networks, one of the major reasons why teams like Akala have built um, on Polkadot and chose to build build on Polkadot versus other potential options is because as a development team, you can come and essentially plug into the existing network of validators instead of having to worry about building this, this security set on your own. Um, customization here in the bottom left, using our framework called Substrate, Akala has been able to build a custom chain uh, spe specifically built for DeFi. Um, for example, being able to pay gas fees in any token is actually built into the blockchain itself. And then any applications built on Akala can leverage that feature. On-chain governance being number five, and then the ability to upgrade without forks um, is kind of a massive differentiator for Polkadot as well. So let's see, I've got 15 minutes. So single blockchain networks like Bitcoin and like Ethereum, um, can do things really well, like Bitcoin is doing the digital gold narrative very well. Um, custom blockchains built with Substrate will do um, kind of one specific uh, use case very well. And then you have networks like Ethereum that are really kind of reaching their max because they're trying to do a lot of different things. Um, and they're, they're, they've done DeFi, DeFi has really emerged as a great use case and they've done it very well, but we need to kind of bring this stuff to the next level and, and allow this all to scale. So. This is just a zoom in of Polkadot and, and kind of pulling out this one blockchain. This, is, this could be something like a Kala, um, a gaming chain, a, an identity chain. Um, we'll see kind of the full spectrum of different use cases, but this is what Polkadot and Kusama are, are kind of com comprised of, is this multiple networks being um, connected for interoperability and then secured by the Polkadot relay chain. There are teams like Interlay building bridges to Bitcoin. There are teams like Snowfork building bridges to Ethereum. Um, so all this stuff soon will be kind of operating in one unified environment. Um, substrate is one uh, kind of word that you'll hear more and more as you get into the Polkadot ecosystem. And this is the, this is the framework that Gavin created after building Solidity. So Substrate is basically, I kind of think of it as like drag and drop blockchain building. Um, we've, there's an existing set of pallets, these, these kind of building blocks that mostly Parity Technologies has built. And then you've got teams like us at Akala, even Chainlink are building additional pallets. So this it will continue to grow in terms of capabilities that teams can plug into their um, substrate based blockchains. Um, scalability, this is kind of the theoretical um, scalability of Polkadot and Kusama and um, according to the Web3 Foundation research team. 
and just comparing this, of course, to where we are today um, with Ethereum and Bitcoin, it's it's not even kind of comparable. And then comparing to, to things like Visa, of course, it's encouraging knowing that we've got the ability to scale um, once all these parachains um, get launched. So here we're looking above um, on top of this network. Let's flip this on its side and look what's being built on Polkadot and Kusama. So you've got this, what we call a layer zero meta protocol kind of tying everything together. And then these layer one blockchains. So Akala, other parachains are kind of the equivalent to Ethereum today, these layer one um, individual blockchains. And then on top of those layer one chains, we'll be seeing massive amounts of liquidity, users, applications being built, and all of these uh, parachains and applications will all be completely um, interoperable, the ability to, to transfer data and value um, amongst each other. Um, Kusama, like I said, um, almost the exact same as Polkadot, just a couple major differences being speed. So speed of governance cycles, which means people can actually push more code more quickly. So it's, it's great for experimentation and moving fast. Um, and then the lower eco economic barrier here is an important differentiator, just given the, the kind of market cap difference, it's expected that it, it'll probably be easier for teams to get um, a slot on Kusama versus um, on Polkadot. And my comment just then about getting a slot on the network leads me to the kind of the bulk, uh, the, the main part of this presentation, which is how do you actually get a slot on Polkadot and how do you get a slot on Kusama? Going back to this diagram, it's not like Ethereum where you can just go and launch any ERC-20 and, and sell your coin and, and you, you move on. Um, with parachains being built for Kusama and for, for Polkadot, you have to actually earn the slot in an auction against um, other parachain teams who are bidding for that, that slot. And that, that parachain auction process is partially, um, it, it can be funded with something called a crowd loan. And that's what I want to introduce today. So we all know the ICO model where there's really no accountability on the team to deliver anything. They might have a white paper, they might name their project Polka this or Polka that and, and raise a bunch of money. But there's no accountability to the team. They can come up with a white paper and, and move on if they want to. There's, there's the second line here is in a traditional ICO, crypto is sent and then you receive a token in return. But you, of course, you never see that original crypto again. And the team can really do whatever they want with the funds. Um, what has been created for Polkadot and Kusama with crowd loans is kind of a complete flip of that model where the team is held accountable for creating value for the network because when someone from the community contributes DOT or contributes KSM, um, they're actually going into this knowing that the principal will be returned at the end of that parachain slot. So it might be one year, it might be two years, but you're going into it knowing that the principal is coming back. At the bottom here, you can see the main trade-off is that DOT or KSM that is contributed to a parachain's crowd loan has to be unstaked. So you're giving up um, what, what has been recently pretty good staking returns on DOT and Kusama um, with your efforts to actually go in and support a crowd loan um, for a parachain in return for, for that parachain team's native token. One thing to, to also keep in mind on the, the third line here is that the team, the parachain team never touches or receives any of the, the DOT or KSM that's, that's contributed to the crowd loan. Um, and I'll get into this in this process in a second, but the, the tokens themselves are actually locked in the core relay chain of Polkadot or in Kusama, in Kusama's case. So this process, we are, we are actively waiting for um, final word on when the first parachain auction will be. Um, if I had to guess, I hope it's going to be by the end of May, but it's going to be soon. Um, and what is going to happen is the first parachain auction will happen. And then the expectation is that these will be happening every two weeks um, for the foreseeable future. So a lot of people in the industry aren't, aren't quite aware or ready for, for what's about to happen, but this is gonna be quite exciting to keep your eye on. And hopefully after this, you'll understand a little bit more about how it works. So here's the process. Um, I've got nine minutes, so I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit, but crowd loans are the first step Parachain auctions, this is the main event here. Um, and I'll get into each of these categories in a second. Um, but if the team, if the one team wins the slot that's kind of up for grabs in that parachain auction, they, they earn the slot, they begin launching, and then they have a fixed duration that they have kind of preset during the auction. So 
On Kusama, the maximum slot is one year. On Polkadot, the maximum slot duration is two years. So I've got this little diagram up here. Crowd loans is the first step, but I'm gonna start with parachain auctions because you need to understand this before you understand why crowd loans are needed. So parachain slot auctions, as you might expect, and you can see here, we're essentially trying to earn one of these spots on the network that you, that you probably remember from that diagram. And there's two ways for teams to bid on these slots in the auction. One being if they're a, a whale sitting on a bunch of dot, they can actually decide to bid on that slot themselves without involving their community. Number two is they can actually use this crowd loan module built um, in the substrate framework to crowdsource KSM or crowdsource dot from, the, from their community. And then down here, I, I already mentioned this, this will be happening every two weeks. So there'll be one auction at a time um, in a sequence of two weeks. So let's get into the crowd loan now. So this is the first part. This is where a parachain team is crowdsourcing KSM or DOT to kind of help bootstrap their bid in the parachain auction process. Um, as I mentioned before, these tokens are locked. So if the parachain team on Kusama says that they're gonna be launching for one year, those, those tokens will be contributed, locked for one year, and then in return, you'll receive a distribution from that parachain team with their native tokens. So that's kind of the, the model. But then, as I mentioned, in the difference between this and the ICO model is the original tokens you contribute, whether it's KSM or DOT, are returned to you um, at the end of that team slot. So in the example I gave of one year, after one year, you, get, you would get all the KSM back that you contributed to that team. And it's never touched by the team um, the only thing the team can do is actually contribute that into the parachain auction, and then it would subsequently be locked. So this is the crowd loan phase. We're about to start this soon, and this is where multiple teams will be crowdsourcing KSM from their communities. And then what it, the comparison I, I like to use is basically like if you're being if you're at a poker table, imagine what you raise in the crowd loan being like this stack of chips, and you push that stack of chips in immediately when the parachain auction starts, because the way the auction is set up, it's um, what's called an unpermissioned candle auction. It's set up in a way that incentivizes teams to bid as high as they can, as quickly as they can. Instead of waiting till the end, like we've seen, you've probably seen with eBay um, auctions where people try to snipe at the end and win the auction at the very end. So how is that actually accomplished? It's, it's with, this, um, with this kind of unpermissioned candle auction set up it looks like a busy slide, which it is, but it's necessary detail to understand um, how this really works. So going back to this diagram up here, we will know the open time and we will know the end time, which is this orange part here. But what we don't know is the select, randomly selected end time. So at the end of the auction, this will be the most exciting part because at this point, there will be a randomly selected block or, or point in time where the highest bidder at that point wins the auction. So in this case, you see Parachain A bidded 55K, Parachain E bidded, um, bid 60K, and Parachain F put in a bid for 75K. So they would have won if it was a traditional auction. But in this case, the, the red bar here is actually the end time and Parachain A wins because they had the highest bid before that randomly selected time. So, Here's an example that kind of wraps all that that I just explained to you um, into one kind of diagram. You've got the team doing a crowd loan, KSM going to this crowd loan. This parachain team, so Karura in this case, Akala's parachain launching on Kusama first, wins the auction and then subsequently goes on to lock this is automatically done by, K by Kusama, but the, the, 50, the 500K KSM here is locked inside of Kusama's relay chain. KAR tokens are distributed to these people, the same people back here who contributed KSM. And then Karura goes on, earns the slot and actually launches. So all the DeFi applications, liquid KSM staking, the DEX and the stable coin all go live on Kusama. And then we would have a year for that slot and then at the end of that year, the KSM is returned to all of those supporters. The exact same thing is the case on Polkadot. Everything I told you um, for Kusama is happening first. And then after Kusama's crowd loans and parachain auctions, parachain teams start going live. Then we'll move to Polkadot, which is where Akala is launching. 
So this diagram is the exact same as the previous one, except of course dots are contributed for polka dot parachain slot auctions. ACA would then be distributed for ACA um, contributors. And then when Akala earns the slot, you'll have um, a similar kind of DeFi hub and application set built or built for and launched on uh, Polkadot. And then in this case, Akala's, this isn't finalized yet, but Akala's slot might be two years if we wanted to max it out versus one year for Kusama. So to kind of wrap this all up, um, the, the one question that people ask is, or one of the questions people ask often is, what happens at the end of this slot? Because if, you're, if you do all this work to get a slot on the network, why would you want that to just kind of end? Um, and there's three options really for teams who get to this point, when they get to this point. So number one being, you could host another crowd loan and participate in the, in a, the additional parachain auction with the crowd loan funds. The second one being the team could actually self-fund. So you, going back to the slide where I showed you the two options, you can self-fund with like a whale account or you can do a crowd loan and, and do a parachain auction after that. And, and the, second, uh, the second point here, this is actually Akala and Karua's goal is to get to this point where we can become self-sustainable and, and sovereign by leveraging our, the Akala treasury in our decentralized sovereign wealth fund, which is going to be continuously built um, through transactions and, and just through DeFi activity on our DeFi hub, that will be contributed to our treasury. Um, a subset of our treasury is this sovereign wealth fund. And then for our second slot, um, if it's two years from, from the, the time Akala launches, we could actually self-fund um, the, the dot for our auction um, to get that second slot. So that, that's exciting um, for me to see if we can actually get to the point where and we can self-fund the second slot, um, if not, maybe the third. And then the third option here, this is probably a, a little technical and probably good for a different presentation, but pair threads are kind of the other option besides getting a parachain. Um, and if a team wasn't able to secure a parachain slot, they could become a pair thread and still continue, um, continue on. So I did have some slides on Akala and Karura. Um, I'm, I'm kind of reaching my um, time here. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you guys do have questions, um, I, I really enjoy talking about this stuff. So feel free to reach out, um, send me any questions you, ha you have. Um, if you are um, on a team working maybe in the, in the DeFi space or have any ideas for collaboration with Akala or Karura, um, definitely reach out and let me know as well. So um, I don't know if we have time for questions or, or where the questions would come in, but I'm happy to answer a couple if we do have time, and if not, um, thanks for having me.